And remember now, we're raising the question today, uh, can you be a Ruth in the modern era? Can you lay at the feet of Boaz? Can you dedicate yourself to your mother-in-law, um, et cetera? You can do that, but men are different today. We're, we're looking at a period of antiquity where laws protected what Ruth did and who she was, and there was a whole different understanding about relationships. So quite frankly, you can't be a Ruth today. And sadly enough, you may not be able to find, well, I'm not saying there are not any Boazes out there. There are. They are, there are, but there are few, and there are very few of them there. And the way to find a Boaz is not the way to do the thing that Ruth did, but I put together these seven principles. Um, and I'm going to put them online in terms of actually so you can look at them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or better yet, just get this tape. Uh, which raises the question of being Ruth in the modern era. Uh, and that will give you the opportunity to, you know, to listen to this over and over again and just listen to my teaching and then go out and start looking around for a man uh, if you you plan to get married, right? So item number six is do you want to reproduce the man that you marry? You know, Ruth was the great-grandmother of David, one of the mightiest men that ever walked planet Earth. There's no doubt about it. And his and the great-great-grandson was Solomon. That's who came from Ruth and her relationship with Boaz. What kind of sons do you want to have? You can look at the man that you're dating, right? And if you have children for him, that's who... You're going to be reproducing him. You are going to be the manufacturer of that man you marry. You're going to reproduce him in men and women. You're going to reproduce. So you have to ask yourself this question, something women have never, well, I think somebody thought, thought about it, but not in depths of such as what we're now, you know, relating. A lot of women say, well, I like him. I like the way he walks and talks. I like his brand new Chevrolet, you know, and so I'm going to marry him. They never think about the fact that the children you have are going to be just like him. Now, if he's a great man, that's a good thing. If he's a great man, that's a good thing. But if he's not a great man, then, you know, you're going to, re you're going to reproduce something that, um, you know. Uh, and then the other thing is, is that I think you need to be very careful going forward. And we can have a teaching on this if you're going to stick with me over the next couple of years to help you find a righteous man, is that we need to look at, if you marry a great man, immediately there needs to be, you know, a man of notoriety. You need this, you need a, that principle you need to put in place right away. For instance, I, everybody knows the late uh, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the slain civil rights leader. Everybody knows him, right? Everybody in the world knows him. And he's got, um, he has two sons. One is named Martin Jr., Right, and the other's named Dexter. And he had two daughters. Um, one died going back about 20, 30 years ago. And uh, he has one now who was a, an evangelist preacher. His daughter, forgive me for not having her name at my fingertips, uh, looks more like Dr. King than any of the children. Well, Dexter looks exactly like Dr. King. But she looks more like and acts more like him. Martin King Jr., who was the older, you've seen him on television, he's on CNN quite a bit, they bring him up. But he's not like his father. He is not his father. He, 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 just, he isn't his father. You know, he's, is he a good man? I wouldn't say he was not, you know, but he is, he, he's not, he, he just isn't like his father. Now, that Dexter is the one uh, that's... Um, I think that um, that's behind sitting next to the mother. Um, and Bernice, yeah, Bernice is her name, uh, is the one that's, that's uh, sitting on mother's lap. A great man, the sons have a difficult time measuring up to the greatness of their father. So if you marry a great man right away, you need to instantly go into, when you start having children for him, training them how to cope with how great their father is, how to deal with standing in their father's shadow. And that can be done. You hang around me, I'll show you how to do it. But let's get back to the basic things what most people will experience. You look at a boyfriend, right? You're a young girl, you got a boyfriend. 
or you're an older woman and you're dating another man. You met him on a job or something, right? Do you want to make more of him, make babies like him? Is, is, do you want to put more people like him in the world? Or do you say, eh, you know, he'll marry me and I can get married, but we have children. I'll be putting more people like him in the world, and the world ain't going to be better off because of somebody like him. Or just the opposite. I can put more people in the world like him. I can marry him, not only marry him, but I can reproduce him throughout the world. I'm going to have 10 children for this man because I can reproduce him. That's a good thing. But you must consider it. I generally go down the road, the path where the ugly stuff happens because the good stuff can take care of itself. But I generally go down the road, check him out. Because you don't want to be giving birth to a no more, to, if you don't marry a no good man and then start giving birth to no good sons. You got me? There's a whole lot of teaching I think we need to do about how to relate, you know, the, uh, and, and so, but you know, every time I look at Dr. King's oldest boy, Martin, I think to myself, you know, he certainly, you know, there's Dexter. Dexter is there. Um, and that's Bernice, right? Ber Dexter's a fellow with the red tie. Dexter went out to Hollywood. He went out to, um, went out to Los Angeles, and we haven't heard hide and a half of him. He didn't want any part of the family goings on, didn't want to try to be in the steps of his father. But he looks more like his father than Martin, the one on the other side. Um, and um, he, you, you just don't know what you, you don't hear. It. He, he, do, he doesn't show up. He's still probably living off some of the king, you know, finances, but he, he doesn't take any part in anything. You never see him. And I thought, I think he thought he was going to make it in Hollywood, but he didn't make it out there either. Bernice, right there, she's very strong, very powerful preacher. She got mixed up with Eddie Long down there at the New Birth Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. That was a mistake. Uh, and her mother died prematurely, I think, as well. And the other daughter right here, I forget her name. She died. Um, you say, Pastor Manny, a name dropping. Okay, I don't even know her name, so I won't drop it then. And then there's Martin on the other side. All right, so th there's a lot that needs to be done that you don't get strong family teaching anymore. You don't get strong family teaching because we don't have strong churches anymore. But if you hang out with me, make a decision. If you're looking for a good man, then you got to listen to the teachings of a good man. You follow? It Doesn't that make sense? And you have to unite yourself with this and give yourself over it. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to rebuke you and rebuke you and rebuke you, and I'll praise you when praise is due. But you can ultimately end up with a good man. Finally, uh, does the man make you feel like a woman? He makes me feel like a natural woman. Aretha Franklin, right? What's it mean by that? Do, do you feel protected by him? Does, do you feel that ain't nothing going to harm you, no way, no how, because your man protects you? Not just when you're in the street. You just feel protected whether he's across the country. You feel protected. And you feel submissive to him. You, you feel automatically submissive to him. You just do. You, you just feel that way because you, you feel protected by him. You know, and you just have an automatic feeling of being submissive to him. And that he is really your head. He's your leader. That's, that's something that just comes naturally. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to plan for it. You don't have to remind yourself. You don't have to take a drink. You know, you just feel submissive to him. That's a good thing. And he makes you feel like a woman. He doesn't make you feel like an equal. Don't, it, that ain't what you want. You don't want to feel like an equal to him. You want to feel protected by him. You want to feel he's your protector. You want to feel submissive. You don't want to feel like the two of y'all are equals, 50-50. That ain't what you're looking for. And he needs to be a person who's of unique experience of giving, a person who's generous uh, and who knows how to, uh, he knows how to give. It's a little bit awkward. I said this the other day. I said, I can't, you know, I'll say it again. You know, if you meet a man, especially if you're a virgin, you're a young girl and you're a virgin, right? Or if you're an older woman and you're a virgin, you know, there, there are a couple of women in my church who hasn't had a relationship with a man in 10, 20, 30 years. Honey, you are a virgin. <laughs> say, Pastor Man, no, I, I have got children. I said, don't, don't you argue with me now. I done told you about arguing, back talking me. 
you haven't had sex with any man in the last 10, 20, 30 years, and we got women in our church like that. You're a virgin. No, you are a virgin. And probably when you were having sexual intercourse, you didn't really know what was going on. But those who are virgin virgins, right? Virgin, 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 virgins, young girl, virgin virgins, you know, a maid, if you were a maid. I know that you should reserve yourself for, for, for sexual intercourse for your wedding night. But that's dangerous. Now, the man that you're going to choose to have to lose your virginity to, he's got to meet all these requirements, would stomp down stars by him. He's got to meet every last one of them, and then no doubt in your mind about all the things. And if he meets the criteria, what uh, Pastor Benning has described as a man, and then you might, the last thing you want to do is check him out. If, you know, because sexual intercourse is a major part of a relationship. It's, it's a meaningful part of a relationship. Don't give your virginity to just anybody. You know, the person to whom you do that to has got to be worth gold. He's got to be platinum gold to give your virginity to this creep. You ain't just give that to anybody. To no anybody. No. But you, I would permit you to if he meets all the requirements, he may not meet the requirement of the virginity tr uh, test. He may not meet that. And you'll have to make that decision. I, I can't go no further on that. I, I, but I think as being an honest broker here, um, I, I have to tell you that um, it's a very important part of a relationship. You... The other thing is that sexual intercourse is, is not everybody is your sexual mate, though you can have sex with them. Not everybody's your sexual mate. All right, we've said enough here today to get us in trouble for the rest of our lives. But I'm going to help you women find some men. I need y'all to work with me. I need you to help me, but I'm going to help you, and I ain't going to stop teaching this until I get all these women in the church married off. This is symbolic. It's where Jesus was baptized. It's where John baptized. And so this is not a rebaptism. It's just a symbolic, if you will, act of what we're gonna do, being in the water at, at the place where Jesus was baptized. And what I'd like to do is to baptize today that we would come to terms with the understanding of what God is calling for in righteousness. The, uh, he's not calling for prosperity. He, he isn't calling for culturalism. God is calling for righteousness. If we would commit ourselves to fulfill all righteousness, and God has called us to be persecuted for righteousness sake, as John was persecuted for righteousness, and so Jesus. I got to tell you that I'll never forget this experience of actually um, stepping into water where Jesus and were baptized, where John has baptized so many people. This is such a historic and a powerful, powerful sight. Just to touch the water uh, was so critical. And I'm glad that people got baptized to have that experience. Uh, it was a safe experience and a great experience. Uh, I'm not even going to change my clothes. I want to just stay in baptism mode until I get back to the hotel. So that's what I want to say. Amen. All right. This has been live from the Jordan River. <laughs> God bless you all. Peace. Good everybody. Righteousness. Boom, chuckalaka goes right there. Over the years, we have served more than one million meals to hungry bellies and hungry people here in the Harlem community. And I wanted you to be able to see that. I want you to see our involvement with youth, our summer youth programs, the, uh, our courtyard being used as a, uh, a place where children can be safe, guarded, and protected as they have their miniature swimming pools, um, and a safe place for children to eat that is guarded, that is protecting, 
protected by our own sense of security and the wholesome and fresh meals that um, that we serve. We, we wanted you to be able to see the mission of this church. And we've been doing this for years. Just recently, one of our members, more than a 30-year member of this church, but it hasn't, not one that... You know that you would probably find as members of some other churches with their nose stuck up in the air, but her father is now close to death or very sick in the state of South Carolina. And uh, what I said to her, well, I said, well, because she doesn't have money, I said we will buy you a bus ticket, a round trip bus or train ticket for you to travel to South Carolina to, to be with your father in this time of pandemic. There's very little funding around. There's, there's sickness everywhere. And and she the thing that just blew me away was she said as she was talking to Elizabeth, she said, but how are you going to do that, to, to pay for me a round-trip ticket to, to travel and give me expense money? And because you got to, Pastor Manning has to feed the children. He has to take, he has to educate the children. He has to, buy school supplies for them. He has to pick them up in the mornings and take them back. And then he's got the ministry he has to take care of, all the bills of running the church, of keeping a major house like our house operational, keep the lights on, keep the, how are you going to be able to do that? And she was almost reluctant to take the money because she felt that it would be better served by feeding the children. We gave it to her anyway. But we want you to know that we do a work in this community. There have been a lot of lies told on us. And it's almost unimaginable why some of the people that have lied on us. But I can tell you behind all of it is the LGBTQ community. They don't want us to be successful, but we are and we're going to continue to be successful in serving the meals that we're serving and serving the people that we are. And the LGBTQ community will not take us down. They are not going to take our church, yet they have defamed us. They've written ugly newspaper articles about us. They've marched against us. They've done a whole lot of ugly things. But you see what we have done, and that's not even the half of our service to children and to the needy in terms of our homeless shelters and the things that we've done over the years, and we will continue. And probably the lies and the smears and the ugly newspaper articles and the wicked spirits and the so-called I ain't for the black man, that is not going to go away. I don't expect it to go away. I don't. But I do tell you this, that we will succeed against all of that, for God is with us, and I am his servant.